Well, it's September 3rd and we're heading to elk country. It's our fourth year chasing elk with no luck so far. That was a conservation call. It's taken us all over the province from Northern to Southern Alberta with very little to show from it. We've walked hundreds of kilometers and haven't had much of an opportunity yet, but we're hoping this is the year it all comes together and we can end a four-year quest for the majestic elk. We're just gonna slip into this alfalfa, get in a bluff, and hopefully an elk comes out. crushed him. The blood's just pumping. That's a lot of emotions running through me right now. I don't even know what to say. My name is Mitchell Payment. I started tagging along with my dad to go hunting basically since I learned to walk. I grew up living the outdoor lifestyle, learning from my dad and any hunting video I could get my hands on as a kid. Once I turned 12, the legal age to hunt, we started taking things more serious than ever, working hard and learning through experience to better our odds to fold our tags on the animals we are pursuing. It has helped us grow into who we are now. Welcome to Season 5 of Moment of Truth TV. All my dreams. Smoked them. <laughs> this box is what dreams are made of. Yes! I'm at a loss for words. Oh, he's so nice in return. He is such an awesome buck. <laughs> that was unbelievable. We're just gonna slip into this alfalfa, get in a bluff, and hopefully an elk comes out. Well, we're just doing the final touches. I'm packing up the truck. We got most of our stuff ready last night, but I'm super excited. We're heading north for elk. We should be able to just catch them starting rutting, and it's just then the bow season. So I'm really excited. We're gonna pack up the rest of the truck and hit the road. So stay tuned. We were getting ready to embark on our first ever elk hunting trip. Completely green, we were heading to northern Alberta to meet up with a friend to see if we can get lucky with an elk. Hearing so many stories on how elk are the ghosts of the bush, we knew we were in for a tough hunt. Well, we made it all the way up here to where we're going to be elk hunting. We're just going to set up camp and get ready to go scouting for this evening. After getting unloaded at camp, we went for a walk and came across some great elk sign right off the hall. So it's lucky. This gave us a bit of promise and excitement for the next few days in elk country. Moment of Truth TV is brought to you by RV City, generations of family fun. Old Smokes Coffee, coffee for the courageous. iHunter app, know your regs inside and out. Black Widow Deer Lures, number one whitetail estrus and deer scents. Tacticam, share your hunt. Sights and Arms, your firearm specialists and by Prime Archery, the most accurate bows on the planet. This segment is brought to you by Burris Optics, focusing on what matters, accuracy, durability, innovation, and value with 50 years of optical engineering. The first morning, we found ourselves heading down a beat up cut line polluted with tracks to try our luck in some calling.
with our calls far from perfect, we spent the rest of the day walking the bush and calling hoping to catch a break. But unfortunately, our first day turned up nothing but lots of sign. Knowing there's a good amount of elk around, the next day we put away the bugle and covered lots of ground still hunting the bush with the odd cow chirp. After getting deep into the middle of the bush, I spotted a cow and calf only 60 yards away. After easing up towards them with a few cow chirps, a curious spike ended up coming in to check us out. Unfortunately, no legal bulls came in and that was the closest we got to an elk that trip. With limited time, that was the only trip we made to elk country that year as we were in pursuit of a world-class whitetail buck. The following year, we found ourselves heading north once again at the beginning of September to a new area to try our luck with elk. This time, we were more prepared with our calls and had a bit more knowledge on how to pursue these elusive animals. While working our way deeper into the bush, we couldn't believe our ears we finally heard our first bugle. Well, we got in here this morning, we were calling and we actually had one calling back to us and he was down in there and we heard him chuckling and we went in there after him, but it was tough sled and the brush is real thick. After the morning hunt, we headed back to camp to regroup and using the iHunter app, we were able to plan where we would go next. The following few days were really tough. We covered a ton of ground walking and calling in hopes to lay eyes on an elk in the new area. We hiked through some beautiful area and seen a ton of sign, but evidently we didn't even see one elk. The quest for elk that year also took us closer to home, trying to get on a local herd that we've seen track from. And the bluff country of Alberta, where we came across more great sign but were just a little late, and behind some successful hunters where we got permission. And yet again, another year has come and gone where we're unsuccessful chasing elk. The past few years, feeling like we're just behind the curve for elk, we decide that this new year we would head up to the same area, but for the opener of August 25th. Upon arriving to camp, we went for a little drive with a mutual friend and local farmer that was kind enough to give us a little tour on where we can hunt and where he had been seeing a bit of activity. We had a great drive and figured out a few spots that might be great for elk and even seen abundance of wildlife, including a beautiful big black bear. When we arrived back to camp, we could not believe our eyes. There stood a herd of around 10 elk, not even 400 yards away from camp. With tomorrow being the opener, watching these elk was absolutely amazing. With a beautiful five by five putting on a show, and a slight increase in my pulse, we were beyond excited for opening day. Well, it's morning number one. <clears throat> we just got up. It's pretty early still. We wanted to get up before the crack of dawn so we can get out there. We spotted those that herd elk last night and there's two shooter bulls in it. And now they were just on the neighboring field from camp. So we're gonna go down the road a bit walk down this fence line in glass and hopefully they're out in the field feeding and we can intercept them going to the bush. We're gonna get the stuff ready to go and head out there. After perking a quick Old Smokes coffee and having a bite to eat, it was go time. We slipped in at first light, continually glassing and waiting, hoping to get a glimpse of an elk, but unfortunately saw nothing but a young white tail buck. We covered some ground during the day, walking and calling, hoping to draw in a bull. But as the evening approached, it was time to slip in where we seen the herd of elk feeding the night before, praying they would do it again. As the time passed and night was approaching, we started to let out a few soft calls, hoping it would make something happen. But unfortunately, nothing showed. The next morning, we woke up to pouring rain, but luckily it cleared up long enough to go for a walk. The rain had game up on their feet. With multiple bears out feeding and a moose coming out right behind us, we were hopeful that elk would be moving too.
With more rain clouds moving in, we headed back to camp to regroup, had lunch before heading out for the evening hunt. With a break in the rain, we went for a drive and spotted a herd of elk feeding in a pea field, and the stock was on. With a nice bull spotted with a spike and some cows, we were finally in the game. As we snuck in tight, we had some cows around us and with a couple cow calls, I looked over the small hill and the nice bull was coming in on a trot. With excitement through the roof, I felt the wind starting to hit the back of our necks and just like that, the bull stopped in his tracks and started walking away. We then crescent the hill and all that remained was a small white tailed buck. We continued to hunt hard the next couple of days, walking and calling with no luck but having our best elk trip yet was a positive and had us optimistic for our next trip, which was a couple weeks later in the exact same spot for the beginning of rifle season. We once again hunted hard, coming across some great sign and beautiful country. trekking through the bush, we didn't even get to lay eyes on an elk, and once again, another year had passed where I didn't get to fold my elk tag. If I'm gonna wear it, it needs to work. It doesn't matter where I go. It doesn't matter what I hunt. Huntworth works. It doesn't matter if the weather is good or bad. Huntworth works. And if Huntworth works for me, it'll work for you and your budget. Any game, any place, any time, Huntworth works. This segment is brought to you by Black Widow Deer Lures and Scents, number one white-tailed doe estrus and deer scents. It's simple, they work. And by Tacticam, the best first-person hunting camera on the market. Made for hunters by hunters. Share your hunt. The summer of a new year has come, and this time we're en route on a preseason scouting mission. A friend of ours and a very accomplished elk hunter, Mark White, was kind enough to invite us to do some hunting in a couple of his spots this year, in an area we have dabbled in a little before. Speaking of the devil, there he is. Upon meeting up with Mark, it was time to hop in the truck and head to the main spot where we'd be hunting to hopefully catch up to an elk. This is where they bed from February till now. I wasn't only excited for the hunting opportunities that this hunt might have in store, but one can learn so much being along the side of someone with a lifetime of experience. After checking cams and having a few nice bulls around, it was time to get on a vantage point to do some glassing. Quickly spotting plenty of deer, including a cool piebald looking buck, it was a great way to start our evening of scouting. As the sun began to set, there stepped out a nice young bull coming out to feed. Watching this bull cover some ground was awesome and made for a great night of scouting and was reassuring of the spot. The next morning we were right back in the same spot and this time we were going to walk some of it to get a better understanding of the lay of the land. After having a great walk and seeing some good sign, it was time to head on home and wait for the season with high anticipation. Exactly three weeks later, we found ourselves en route to meet up with Mark, except this time the goal was to let an arrow fly into an elk. Upon arriving, we hopped in the truck and it was time to go out and see if our scouting mission will pay off. Just before our spot, we spotted elk track on the road with a wallow in the ditch, which was super exciting. After getting a few reps in through the bow, it was time to head in. We checked cams on the ridge and with a couple nice bulls still on camera, Velvet Shed, we overlooked the valley and with no visible elk, we were gonna stay on top and hopefully catch some elk coming up to feed on the various crop and alfalfa fields. As the sun set, we let out various calls to hopefully entice an elk out. But unfortunately, all that showed were some white tails.
The next morning, we were heading right back to the same spot, hoping to intercept one coming back to bed. We then dropped down into the valley, heading right into their bedroom, hoping to have a change in luck. After some calling, I heard a bugle across the valley and there stood a giant bull. Unfortunately, we were watching my dream bull walk out of my life as we weren't able to catch back up to him. The next few days we hunted hard with Mark, morning and night. We came across some great sign and seen a good number of wildlife. We got some dinner. Sliced his head right off. Meat's gonna be perfect. Unfortunately, the only other elk we saw were three cows on the last morning of our hunt. With a busy fall of hunting, that was a wrap for elk hunting that year. This year, using everything we've learned, it's time to bear down and get an elk. As tag soup is tasting all too familiar, it's time for some tenderloins on the grill. Well guys, a dream might have just come true. We talked to this gentleman and he gave us permission to hunt this piece in what I'd consider the elk mecca. This is where the elk are in this area and there's a bunch of them. There's a big mud pit wallow area here and these trees are annihilated. This could be really cool. I don't know, we've never had the opportunity or been privileged to hunt a spot like this. I am so stoked, so let's get after it. Finally catching a break and acquiring some great permission in a major feed area for the elk. Seeing great sign everywhere we went, we set up a reveal cellular camera and couldn't wait until season. Moment of Truth TV is brought to you by Revolution Armory, Canada's best custom shotguns. G5 Outdoors, designed to hunt. Burris Optics, find what matters. Reveal cellular cameras, always on the hunt. Victory Archery, the carbon arrow experts. And by Score Ammunition, proudly Canadian. This segment is brought to you by Revolution Armory, affordable quality craftsmanship. Our elk hunt this year unexpectedly started out in the prairies while chasing mule deer, spotting a beautiful bull working his way back into the rolling hills and coolies to bed. And after watching him go into a bluff and not come out, the stock was on. After getting settled in about a hundred yards from the brush where we figured the bull was, it was time to let out a few cow chirps to hopefully draw him out. And just like that, this gorgeous bull was coming in on a string and had my heart racing. Knowing right away that my shot was far from lethal made my heart sink. Watching this bull walk miles out of my life with not even a drop of blood was a tough pill to swallow. Well, when it comes to hunting, we've definitely had our ups, but we've had our fair shares of downs. And that right there, I think, is by far the biggest down I've had while hunting. And you know, that's a four year quest coming down the pipe. And ideally, we could have had a caller behind us, but when we're, it's just dad and I hunting and filming, we can't do that. And he came in, stopped, and he just turned a little bit off center. So I was tucking it into the close shoulder, hoping it would just catch everything and absolutely annihilate him. But I think we just got super unlucky and hit the hardest bone in his shoulder and it just snapped off because it broke off right at the half out. And I, I don't even know what to say. It's real unfortunate. And uh, I guess that's just another story in the elk hunt. And hopefully we can end that quest later this year. And Five days later, we were back at the awesome permission we acquired in August in the heart of elk country, hoping for redemption. As the sun began to set, a few white-tailed deer started to come out to the field to feed on the lush alfalfa. With last light approaching, I caught a couple elk heads coming down the pipe when there stepped out a beautiful big cow. 
she was followed by a big heavy whitetail buck to wrap up this evening's sit. The next morning, we were en route to the same spot a couple hours before daylight to hopefully intercept the elk coming back from feeding. As soon as we got out of the truck, we heard a deep bugle out in the field. While slipping down the backside of the field slowly and quietly, we found ourselves surrounded by elk, including two spikes right in front of us and a big bull herding cows around in the field. After they moved off, we snuck into some buck brush to take cover for legal shooting light. As it got light, I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw a 2x2 two two spike crossing the field. And with a couple cow chirps, he started coming right in our direction. The bull was now within range and starting to circle downwind. When I heard him trotting away, I knew I was going to have to make it happen. I crushed him. I think I crushed him, Dad. Right behind the shoulder. Stay on him. I think I smoked him. The blood's just pumping. Well, guys, I just released an arrow into a beautiful bull elk. I seen him coming across. Cow chirped him in. He slipped in behind us. I had to stand up, draw back. I chirped him, he stopped and I let it fly and it looked like it hit him right behind the shoulder, maybe a touch low, maybe a touch forward. He went right in behind this bush. We could see the blood running down his side and pumping out and we haven't seen him leave. We're gonna give him some time and go from there. Hopefully he's laying right there. He's an absolute gorgeous bull. The bubbles on the victory arrow, I think is a good sign. After waiting two hours just to be safe, it was time to go just find my bull. It. And with a significant blood trail, he was down right where we last seen him. I see velvet tines sticking up. Yes! <laughs> That's four years of hard work and just dedication and busting our butt. And I see velvet tines sticking up right there. Oh my gosh. <sighs> That's a lot of emotions running through me right now. I don't even know what to say. I've waited so long for this moment right here. He may just be a spike, but to me, this is the such a trophy, and I couldn't be any more thankful to finally lay my hands on a bull elk. Life is good right now, and we're on such a good roll. Good job, Mitch. How to be, Dad? Good filming. That was tough. We got her done. Yes. We got a bull elk. Closed captioning is brought to you by RV City, located in Mournville and Nisku, Alberta.